Hi. Hi, everybody. Uh, I hope I'm uh, in a good zone for the volume. I always check. It could be a little bit quieter. How does that feel? That feels better. Good. Hi, everybody. Welcome to a magic show for the ends of the world. Hi, 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 all you lovely people. Uh, hi, it's Diane. Hi. And hi to my mom. Hey, microphone's cutting out a little bit. Mike is cutting out. Yeah, maybe I'm coming down the music. Let's do it. Let's take this away. Absolutely. Too much rope in our faces, I think. <laughs> um, Yes, it's the last month. It's the grand finale. It's the actual last show. Riven made it August. It's not too. Thank goodness for that. Thank you all for joining me uh, this evening. I am very excited. Uh, the theme tonight shall remain a mystery. I'll reveal my plan here in a little bit. First, my obligatory long ass beginning monologue. Uh, are you guys excited? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, Yay. <laughs> Yay. Okay, so what I want to do is talk about the show. In retrospect, some of the motivations, and I hope you guys have a beer, or a root beer, or a sparkling water, or a can of condensed milk, or something refreshing to drink. <laughs> Here's a few thoughts. Yeah, mom, what do you got to drink? Drink it some? Um, just tea. Here. We made it. I, ha I have my air conditioning on, so I can have Fun. tea. You can't drink air conditioning. Everybody knows that. So guys, uh, one more time I'm gonna ask, is that volume okay? Yeah. Okay. All right, you can hear me. We're good. Um, one year ago, I dared myself via a poorly written Facebook post to create a public magic show. I said that I probably ought to, and then I just began promoting it. And then because I had promoted it, I had to actually perform it. And then I did do that, regardless of what anyone might have expected or thought of the idea. During the pandemic and quarantine times, magicians all over the world started doing these Zoom shows. And it was all brand new and actually exciting because concerts and stand-up comedy don't work so great over Zoom. But magicians and magic shows, they discovered that the Zoom thing totally works in that capacity. And I've discovered this as well through the virtual shows that I have been doing for my work with multiple abilities during that same time. After a year and a half of doing those Tuesday afternoon shows, I had this itch to create a public magic show in the evening, and I wanted it to be a little subversive and cool, and like not quite as safe as the other shows. Uh, I, it was a tough thing to map out in my head, but I hoped to make something entertaining and crazy, and to have a discernible structure yet be able to keep changing it, writing it from scratch every single month and do it for exactly 12 months and no more and no less and to make it accessible to adults who know my peers and yet not exclude their children or anyone. I took a shot at it. I nearly quit after the disastrous first show and my very good friend Nathan suggested that I take that weekend before the Tuesday show and really work the bugs out. Give it another shot. And I'm glad that I did. Magic has no particular precedence in my life prior to the age of 40. I have a background in music and many moons ago theater and much more recently music video. Though I've only been learning and performing magic for less than four years, I can't express how addicted, how fully engaged I became, how much money I have spent, how much I have learned and forgotten and relearned the ridiculous collection of books, and magic tricks, and equipment, and videos, and stuff that I last. Why did this excite me so much at this age? Was this desire and the allure of magic always there? Yes, in many ways. 
from the early 80s black and neon colored Harry Blackstone being a magic set that I adored as a child, thank you mom, to the Victorian magical logic and 19th century carnival aesthetics living between the pages of Lewis Carroll and Ray Bradbury's books that I obsessed over as a teenager, to the visual magic tricks that I have employed in some of the film work that I have done since then. Magic has been there aesthetically and tickled my brain since the very beginning. I just didn't know to flip that switch until halfway through my life. All of the elements of what I wanted this show to be came together pretty quickly. I knew it was gonna be a sort of punk rock take on magic, though the category punk rock magic doesn't really exist. The edgy confrontational artiness of early Clint Teller and the amazing Jonathan. I wanted to head in that direction, but not exactly. I didn't need to be as brash or confrontational. There is definitely some terrific, weird, modern stuff out there now, but I still hadn't quite seen the thing that was in my head. I knew I wanted a cool soundtrack, a vibe, constantly changing themes, and I thrive on being creative, inventive, and resourceful when faced with limitations and shoestring budgets. I was gonna do it and do it in a particular punk rock kind of way. The flip side of that coin, though, is that I am completely obsessed with the golden era of magic, which would be, say, 1860 to 1930, and desperately wanted to convey to anyone that would listen or watch my show that there was, in fact, actually a time for this art form that was wonderful, completely cool, fascinating. The spirit and feel and look and output of that bygone, truly magical era, if you could just see it a little bit, my hope was that it would clear folks' minds of the glammy, glittery, embarrassing visual atrocities of magic fashion and set design from the 70s, 80s, 90s, up until now. 50 years of terrible, ridiculous, off-putting costumes, hair, aesthetic choices. It didn't have to become this gaudy thing, but somewhere along the line, the last century it did. So let's talk about that golden era for a moment. This is a whole world. I intend to show you something about it in a moment here, but the point that I want to make is this. The world that you and I mutually live in together is a place where whole other worlds, past or present, and some might argue the future, are just stacked on top of one another, hiding and folded inside of our own, waiting for you to discover them, to dig them up, and you can research them and kind of live there as an escape, you know? So you know, Obviously, it doesn't have to be this magic era that I'm talking about, but why not pick a world from time to time to inhabit while you live out your own world in present time? There are so many to choose from. And before I show you this world, this brings me to the name of my show, A Magic Show or the End of the World. Please realize that there have been many ends of the world Please realize uh, uh, I, uh, that the world uh, never quite ends, uh, does it? But some worlds, some worlds they did end, they do end. Eras and ages, the golden age, golden era of magic. Yes, it came and it went, and we don't even have any of it on film, hardly anything. Uh, but it is recorded in artifacts and books and letters and props and stage equipment and costumes that have survived and legends and handbills an era of magnificence. So I put something together for you. I want you to take, I want to take you guys there right now. And uh, you guys ready? Can I take you there? You in? Yeah. Let's go there, okay? I intend to transport you now with one other surviving relic of this bygone era, the posters. This is how cool this world was. I hope that in watching this, you will all have a better understanding of just what made this so attractive to my eye, and I hope that it will be as attractive to yours. I'm gonna pause uh, Kate Bush right now, and we are going to get into this thing I'm telling you all about. And it's gonna be like this. Get ready. Hold on to your hat. We're ready. You're gonna freak out. Here we go. Um, We're not wearing hats. Well, that's true.
right? That's that's a lot of um, a lot of whispers from a bygone era of something maybe more amazing than anything we've ever seen because those those things were happening in front of an audience. They're all practical things. We're so used to our CGI and movie oh. magic. But those people had to put together a spectacle with physical things that could do the same thing, blow your mind. But I'm sure because of the physicality of it, that you could not help but, I mean, the wonder that the, that audience must have felt must have been so genuine. That's really what I'm trying to say. Uh, is yeah. there a specific person that can be looked back and like shown to have created the style or like created a lot of these posters? Since a lot of them look very similar. Would it yeah. be Art, Art Deco? Art Nouveau. Art, Art Nouveau. Art de Nouveau. I, Art yeah. Nouveau. Yeah. Nouveau would be the era. Yeah. Yeah. This, this yeah. is the height of uh, that. Yeah. Yes, I get those two mixed up, those two eras. You it's only about, about 10 years of difference between them, Art Nouveau and Art Deco. They're related. Okay. Yeah. It was 100 years ago. I mean, that's all things were back then. That's, that's about the end of it, about 100 years ago, where we're at right now. But but yeah, I mean, um, uh, you're talking about really the, just the turn of the century and, and mm -hmm. the years preceding it and the years just after it, really. And um, the, um, the dudes that are really that you see time and time again with this this uh, influence are going to be Keller and Thurston. That's where you see a lot of these um, imps and demons whispering into their ears. Um, Diane, you brought this up the last show, and um, I, I pointed out that uh, it's a funny thing, isn't it? Because possibly because they're so well dressed, and at that time there is an influence and an interest from the powers that be. This is like entertainment before film, and it's big business. They did it despite whatever uh, blowback they might have gotten from from whatever community. I mean, they're, those are touring magicians. I mean, it's almost like a heavy metal band, like who, who might put a poster up, like Motley Crue in the '80s, and have a pentagram on. You know, and you might have all of these evangelical people burning their albums ahead of time. Well, that didn't happen for these magicians. Somehow it was a seductive idea that a man, mostly men, in a tuxedo with a demon whispering into his ear, that that's okay. And um, of course the suggestion there is that they are um, tapped into the, uh, to the mysteries of the universe that you and I are not, right? That's, anyway. But I would say yes, Keller and Thurston are big. Um, this is this is a uh, Keller particularly is the person who really brought it together, uh, and then Thurston and Houdini are the same era right after that. Um, yeah, does that answer your question? I mean, we could. You obviously saw a mazillion magicians there, but I would say they had the money. And you can't beat Alexander if you lean this way uh, towards me. This guy over here, wow, beautiful. All of his stuff is really beautiful. We covered that in a different episode. So, yeah, I think I was there when you did the thing with Alexander. The mentalism um, show. And yeah. the mentalism show. That's so, right. That's right. Great. Thank you. Yeah, this, so, thank you. You're welcome, Moto. No problem. Thanks for being here, by the way. Thanks for that question. Um, anyways, yes, punk rock plus golden era, shoestring budget, big imagination. Combine all of that. That was somehow going to be my show occupying pretty much every day of my life for one year, uh, all carefully put together in my apartment and broadcast out to all of you twice a month. Mistakes, mishaps, bullseyes, oohs, ahs, puppets, knives, fire, and blood. And by the way, regarding imagination, I just want to get this on record. A lot of what I've done in this show, much of the magic tricks that you've seen are of my own invention. I don't know if anyone knew that because I didn't mention it very often. If you ever want to know what has my thumbprint on it, go to my YouTube videos, all of the asterisks in the set list of tricks. Those are mine. Or in some cases, simply my twist on already existing magic tricks. But significant enough to put an asterisk next to you. Now, whenever you get to the end of something, something that has meant a lot to you, 
It is important to say things that you couldn't say before or forgot to say to get the perspective that you hadn't before or just couldn't put into words. So I think I said a lot in this opening monologue that I wanted to say, but I have not said it all. I want to give you all of the leftover broken up thoughts to reassemble into a more finalized and complete picture throughout the show, a reason for doing this stuff. And I'll do one reason per month. So 12 altogether. And speaking of leftover thoughts, this show is the best of what is left over. That's in fact the mystery thing to this show. The best of what's left over. It's a mix of two things. Killer new magic that would have fit into a particular previous month, but I missed the deadline once I discovered, or even in some cases created the trick. And the best of just what wasn't good enough the first time. So in other words, the really good B-sides, not the crappy B-sides. So we're gonna take it month by month in, in order, okay? So let's start with the beginning of the show, which of course was the September show. Um, so reason number one, reason number one for doing this magic thing. Um, of all the midlife crises I could have had, I think I picked a good one. Also, it's pretty cool when your midlife crisis and your pandemic hobby can be the same thing. Uh, killing two birds with one stone. And speaking of killing things with stones, uh, September, the theme was religion, history, mayhem, but also just a variety show. And I was just setting up the tone for the show. Um, so in other words, because it was a variety show, um, I can do whatever I want right now. And so I'm gonna show you guys this. I have with me a, uh, a steel tube, okay? This is, um, it's a, uh, it's like a plinth. This ball sits on top of it, like so, like so. And the ball wants to sit there unless I do something else with it. And that would be this. Did anybody get sick in the last three years? You know, just like a cold or anything else? Anybody? Oh, I discovered a really great way to um, help with that. There's a lot of uh, sinus problems when you get sick where your sinuses get uh, jammed up. And I think all of us have heard that your sinuses are kind of all, can all these orifices are sort of connected in a way and so what I've learned what I've decided anyway is that you can just take a giant ball bearing and uh just put it in any, any old orifice will do so here we go I'm gonna show you what I mean right now okay you ready <laughs> no go like this okay watch 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 ready Lydia does this by the way okay here we go Got it. That hurt like, it hurt really bad. <laughs> but it works, it, it really works. They feel great. I recommend this, I really do, do not try this at home. I do recommend, <laughs> um, uh, okay, here's another example. Let's go, in fact, let's go back in. Let's send it up my nose, you ready? I'm gonna send it up my nose. Hold on, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm telling, well, I'm telling you right now that the sinuses are all connected. Okay, you ready? <laughs> okay, right here, ready, mom? Oh. Okay, hold on. Oh. Wait. I got it though. I got yeah. it. I got it. Cute. <laughs> I can do one more. I can do one more. I'm gonna put it in my ear. Don't try this at home. Okay? Ready? Ready? 
Like this. Okay. Lydia? Huh? Can you help me? Can you can you hit? Can you hit my head? Yeah. I'm sending it down. Yeah. Through. Got it, got it. If you ever get a cold, forget your neti pots. This is how you need to do it. Ball bearing, run it through all of the tubes and you'll be fine. So that's that. Now, something else that could have fit into the September show. I never, ever, ever, ever wanted to do this. Uh, I was not planning on it. I don't like this trick. I think it's uh, not cool. Uh, you can't get, uh, you can't get the chicks doing the linking rings trick you can or or that first trick or any of the tricks you can't get checks for doing magic so check it out linking rings i'm going to do it anyway because it's the last show i waited this long so the big deal here is that you get four four rings and it's uh the whole thing is one two three four um let me show you this ready It's you know a little bit rusty, but I'm I'm gonna tell you right now that there's these are solid steel. You wanna take a look at that. Test it for yourself. There's welding on it. That's that's just welding. Okay. You guys excited to see the linking rings? Aren't you so glad that you stayed up for this? <laughs> Check this out. Okay, ready? Watch. Ready? Ready? And so, we have passed the threshold of, uh, of metal and metal. Okay? That's great. So let's see what we can do with these guys. Ready? Now, we're getting somewhere. Let's keep going. Mom? Mm -hmm. is, your hair, is your hair blowing back? Watch this. Watch this. And now, and now, well, let's let's do something more interesting than that. Uh, if I can do impression with the Lincoln Grains. Um, let me do an impression for you now, okay? You ready? If I had five rings, I'd do the Olympics. Um, mm -hmm. Can anybody tell me, Mom? Yeah. This is an impression. Who? What's this an impression of? You know, Mickey. <laughs> Mickey who? M R C K E Y. Mimi. <laughs> Mickey Mons. Mickey Mouse. What do you think? Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mons. Mouse. Wait, Mom. Mickey, Mickey Mouse. Mouse? Mickey Mons. <laughs> oh, Mickey Mons. <laughs> you guys, I can do one other impression. I'm gonna do it for you right now. Ready? Watch this, watch this. Okay, who is, who's this? I'll give you a hint. It's the girlfriend. <laughs> who is it? Mini Moose? Mimi Mons? <laughs> yep. Mimi Mons? Yep, Mini Mons. <laughs> Mini Mouse. Mini Mons. Mini Mouse. I feel like I feel like you guys don't know who uh who Minky Mons is. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. We're gonna have to do something about this. Who's the leader of the club that's made few and me? 
M I N K E Y M O N S E. Hey there, hi there, ho there. You're as welcome as can be. M I N K E Y M O N S E. Minky Mons. Minky Mons. Forever we will hold your banner. Hi, 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 hi. Come along and sing the song and join our jamboree. M I N K E Y M O N S E. How did you make? It? How did you make it sing? How the heck did you do that? And and that's the, and that's the Lincoln Ring. That's too funny. Whoa. Oh I I am very excited now to um yeah um that was the linking rings um I'm I'm very excited now to share to move into the next month which was October and um and how, how appropriate um uh October was October was what Halloween, duh. Halloween, Halloween. Halloween. It was a seance. We did a seance. Mm -hmm. And we had ghosts. And uh, we did a real seance uh, for the ghosts that lived here, the, the, the Davenports, right? Mm -hmm. um, here's reason number two uh, and how appropriate for this. I did this because I wanted to scare myself. And it worked. I was scared every single time. That thing that uh, David Bowie describes as swimming out to the point where your feet don't touch anymore and you're almost where you're supposed to be. That if you make art, put yourself in a risky position of not knowing for sure if you're safe. That's a good place to be because then you take chances and you learn how to survive. <laughs> you know, if you're too safe, you may not make good art. So um, I was especially scared during that show because there was a, an element of, I had to pretend like the magic was being done by ghosts, but I was doing the magic. It was, it was a, love, a couple different levels there. It was very I mean, scary. Pretend. Never mind. It really happened. There were really ghosts, and I brought them together. Uh, never mind. We won't say all that in the Friday show, will we? Um, okay, so um, here's a trick that I could have done. What did it do? Um, I want to introduce you to a haunted handkerchief. Okay, now this seemingly unassuming handkerchief is. I won't say that the handkerchief is necessarily haunted because it's only haunted sometimes. And what I mean by that is that uh, think of it like an apartment that a ghost might visit or come and go at his leisure. Uh, what ghost are we talking about? Why Glorpy, of course. Glorpy. Mm. Glorpy. Uh, this is where he likes to hang out. I don't know if that makes any sense. I'm gonna try my best to, uh, to demonstrate Glorpy. Okay, ready? So it's something like this. I'm gonna fold, uh, I'm gonna fold this handkerchief like so and then i'm gonna ask for you to help me actually if that's yeah. if that's cool um something like this and uh well before we fold it over mm -hmm. if you could just grab glorpy out of the air and and here i'll hold it open you grab glorpy throw him in there got it you got him good get him in there get him. oh closed it ghostbusters eat your heart out okay I think, I think we've done it. Now, we are all just super, super, super calm. And by the way, the fan is on, but this isn't the fan. If I can, Glorpy, why don't you show these good people that you're here in your handkerchief environment? Yes? Wait, did you see that? You see that? Glorpy. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Glorpy, Glorpy. Glorpy. Oh, oh, did you see that? 
<laughs> yeah, bro. Glorfi, are you there? Ooh, ooh, he's he's uh he's responding. He's a happy guy. I'm gonna show you something. Glorfi, get out of there. Get out. Get out. We've had enough. Had enough. Had enough of you. Oh. Glorfi left a little souvenir behind. His business card. Oh. Hmm. Adorable. Adorable. I and do love Glorfi. Adorable. Uh, and there you go. And you may wonder why I didn't do that trick in October. It's so good. Um, hey, uh, Cheyenne. Yes? I have a trick for you. Okay. Okay? Okay. Uh, this is, um, well, it's going to look something like this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spill some stuff out of here. I've got an empty bag, okay? Okay. Pretty empty. Mm. Pretty empty. Um, I've got some vampire teeth. Again, mm. we're running running with the October theme, okay? And I've got uh, some string, and I've got a deck of cards, okay? So, listen. Uh, I'm going to riffle through these cards, and I'm going to have you pick a card. Okay? Ready? Okay. One, two, three. Stop. Okay, not the Queen of Hearts, though that would have been perfectly appropriate, but how about this guy? The Ten of Diamonds. Okay. That's a great card. Okay, if you could do me a favor, put the card somewhere in this deck of cards and lose it. Sounds good, great. And then I'm gonna shuffle the cards like so, and shuffle the cards like so. Cheyenne? Yes? You like vampires? Yes. You like vampire magic tricks? Yes. Your card is somewhere in here. Oh. oh. Here we go. I'm going to tie a piece of string around these teeth. And there's something about this trick that might seem familiar to you. I didn't really think about that ahead of time, but it don't matter. Look at this. Vampire teeth, tying of string, and this is what this looks like. Go Let, fishing. Let's go fishing. You ready? Hey, vampire teeth, try to find Cheyenne's card. It was a... Ten of diamonds. Ten of diamonds going in, going in. Good luck. Find it, find it, find it, find it. I hope you do. I hope you do. I hope you do. And oh, look at that. What? 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 It took no time. It clamped down on it. Okay, Carl. All right. <laughs> And that's a trick you can sink your teeth into. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming to the last show. Cheers. Okay, now back to what were uh, the theme of the month. That was food. November was, it's Thanksgiving month. It's a food themed month. We did a food themed magic show. Now, I am going to. Um, I'm gonna uh, do something. Well, you know, you just reminded me of something. You just finished your soda, right? Um, yes. Yes, I did. We're gonna talk about the two major food groups that we never covered in November. And that would be soda, pop, and gum. Okay? Now, on the nutritional pyramid, Soda and gum are right under like cheese or something or dairy. I don't know. Um, so I just noticed something uh, Lydia did not uh, hold, hold on to this for very long. Um, I guess it's really hard to see that because of the border of video. Wait, um, uh, okay, so this was the can that you were pouring your root beer out of, uh, which you have managed to crush. How nice, Lydia. Um, okay, you ready? Watch this. I'm gonna do something. Gonna, this is a miracle. Ready? Here we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna start like this. 
Here, let's hit this magic button. Okay, how about that? Yeah. Now watch very carefully. Watch. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. <laughs> and there you, and, and there you have it. It's a perfectly restored King of root beer. It's beautiful. And there weren't multiple holes that I didn't know about in the can that sprayed all over my table. Not at all. It's a trick I just shouldn't do. I think that's the bottom line. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> well, it would have been, been cooler if I'd done it the, the real way. Um, yeah, you know, the whole thing there uh, was that I forgot to do was this, because these happen so fast. Reason number three. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Reason number three. Uh, check it out. This is a bit long, but I'm going to say this. Because the father of... What's that? What? What? Because the father of modern cinema... George Méliès was a magician, and so was Orson Welles. And writers like Charles Dickens and Lewis Carroll were conjurers to varying degrees. And Steve Martin, definitely, and Nathan Fielder were magicians before they were ever comedians. And rock stars from bands like the Pixies and Possum Dixon and Grantley Buffalo are magicians. It turns out that you can be more than one thing. It is okay. Speaking of musicians, I have been asked what I'm going to do next since the show has come to its conclusion. Uh, I was really only asked by one person, but I want to answer this question. Uh, I am going to get back into my first love, which is music. I have an album that I need to finish that I've been working on for ages. It's time to finish it. It's time to get back on stage in a full band context. If I can, I miss it. Regarding magic, well, two things. If I can figure out a way to perform magic on stage and keep in mind that Portland is not a magic-friendly town, there's no particular venue for the art form. I would like to try at some point. I would still call it a magic show for the end of the world, and it would be a full stage translation of the spirit and energy and aesthetic of this virtual show. Just bigger, actual large hand with music, and only the best irreverent and punk rock magic kind of stuff. Uh, so, like condensed from the best of what I know, but new stuff as well. The second thing, I intend to make a cut down film showcasing the best and craziest things that happened during this one year of this show and premiere it at some point this fall or winter. Probably we'll rent out the little theater inside Movie Madness and then drinks at the horse brass afterwards. That would mark four years of magic and I would consider it graduating from a self-taught, completely nonsensical college course on magic of my own devising. I really hope some of you will come and celebrate that evening, watch the film, Grab a pint and a scotch egg with me. Speaking of delicious food, who here loves breath freshening? Uh, David Gamble? <clears throat> Got some gum. Got some gum. Uh, yeah, and uh, if you do, uh, which I, I know you do, David, listen. Like, there's two kinds. Man, there's the gum, <laughs> and there, <laughs> there's mints, okay? And listen, um, I've got both. And what I'm, what I'm on about is this. What I'm on about is, if, if, listen, David, if you can tell me mm -hmm. which hand, let me back up. What's your favorite? Are you more of a breath mint guy or a gum guy? Uh, uh, definitely more of a breath mint. You're a breath mint guy. Yeah. If you can tell me which hand has the breath mints, i put them behind my back. I will send you a single breast mint in the mail. <laughs> okay, you ready? All right. Yeah, a, a challenge that I know you're up for. <laughs> hold, on, hold on here. Um, okay. David, which hand 
has the breath. Oh, by the way, is this my right hand or my left hand? I'm only. Uh, at you just moved your elbow. Was your right? My right. Okay. Do I have breath mints in my right elbow? <laughs> my right <laughs> or my left? Yeah. I think you should lift up your left scapula. Which is this one. Yeah. Yeah, that's just absolutely dumb. Ah. Yeah. Let me let me make it easier for you. I'm gonna do it in front of your face. Okay? okay. You ready? Which hand, which hand has the mints? Okay. <laughs> which hand has the mints? Your right hand. No. What? Um, <laughs> oh. David, Come on, David. <laughs> okay. I gotta get my eyes checked. Yeah. I mean, maybe let's let me get closer and help you out. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Ready? All right. Which hand okay. has the mints? Oh, I'm the, the mints. I'm giving you a clue. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um. Left hand. Clearly. This one. Yeah. No, I don't think so, David. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm afraid your breath shall remain unfresh. <laughs> oh, oh, dang. I'm going to give you one more chance to get this man sent to you in the mail. 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 Mail order mint. <laughs> to your right hand. In my right hand? Yes. OK. Wait, hold on. I'm gonna right. put it on my back. Ready? Oh, okay. okay. Right hand. Which hand has the mint? Definitely the right hand. Wrong. Right. You don't get any mints. You wow. Are... <laughs> I'll mail to you in the mail. No. <laughs> oh, bad yeah. breath for the rest of my life. <laughs> um, no less than you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> That was fun. Um, that was awesome. Thank you. Listen, I know that I kind of was late on the food categories, but there is another food category. I'll get to it in a moment. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do one. I gotta go to reason number whatever the next reason is. Okay, ready? That would, that would probably be really impressive if I wasn't still half asleep. Are you asleep at a magic show? That's okay. You guys are all free to sleep right now. It really is okay. And if, I, I would be shocked if some of you weren't. Um, uh, okay, so number four, reason number four. <clears throat> this is reason four. Not all of these are funny, by the way. Some of these are quite serious and very personal. Um, because magic is the place to confine all of the deception that lives with you. Anything dishonest or deceiving about me this is where I put it. I find it safe to put that human shortcoming there and only there because it can be repurposed into something positive and entertaining. Otherwise, I try to live the most honest life that I can and to be as honest as I can in all things. Peace on earth and goodwill to people kind and all living creatures kind certainly begins with honesty. Speaking of peace on earth and goodwill to people kind, uh, December was holiday magic, okay? Now, this is where I blend food and holidays. Um, this is a food that you could certainly uh, enjoy during the holiday. It's not really a holiday food, uh, or you can enjoy it during the summer for that matter. But the point that I want to get at is I didn't want to bring Christmas magic into this because I don't have any Christmas magic to give you. What I am going to do is give you two tricks that I get from my very first Christmas special. Uh, the one before I created this show called a Robin Wash, a very special Robin Washburn's Magic, their special show. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> anyway, um, so you guys ready? Yeah. Yeah. So excited. To do, to do it. Okay, hold on <laughs> one second. <clears throat> I wonder what trick it's going to be. Oh, 
bag of marshmallows today. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Oh, you put them, you're putting the ones on the floor? Oh, oh it just came out of my stomach. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. So These are all sorry. going in the garbage or back into my mouth. Yeah. You, you pick. Oh, that's what it is. Hot chocolate. That's exactly, thank you. I was trying to remember what is the is hot chocolate. I love hot chocolate around Christmas time. Uh, this was another trick that I did during the Christmas special that I did at, uh, during the pandemic, during the throes of the pandemic. What? Oh yeah, it was deep in the heart of the pandemic. Deep in the heart of the pandemic. Listen, uh, can anybody tell me, this is another impression. This is a famous Christmas character. Judah. Uh, no. <clears throat> Blanco. Blanco the Christmas clown. Dang it. Yeah, close. Close. I don't know my my guy. Hey, Blanco the Christmas clown. And I, you should know that. Okay, so there it is. Now, listen, here we go. Watch very carefully. What I do is I take this and then I go like this and I squeeze this like this. So now watch what happens when I add it to this hand, like so. Yes, watch. Okay. Now let's reverse that, like so. Wait, 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 wait. And there it is. Okay. Great. Great. Do that again. And there it is. Now, let's take this ball and put it right here. Stuff it up into my fingers. Okay. And now we got that. Watch very carefully. I'm going to do this again. And and then there we go. Two, and then I mean, all we can do at this point is um, bring it back like so, like so. Mm -hmm. Then maybe what we'll do is cram that into my knuckles, and we're left with a situation that looks a bit like this. There's three balls, okay. And if you really believe in the miracle of Christmas, which I hope you do, um, well, this is the real miracle. 
not because of the method of this magic trick, but because it hurts my hands so much. And I hope I can do it. Pray for me. Uh, can't. Oh God, and I did it. Oh, it is a Christmas miracle. Oh. And look at that hand. Thank you, Blanco, the Christmas clown. Thank you, Blanco. And, uh, and that's that trick the multiplying balls trick. Um, it is a Christmas miracle. Um, reason number five. Well. <laughs> oh. I've got a full box of it. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. We're not going anywhere without all my reasons. I need to get out of it. Reason number five might look something like this. I wanted to know how long a year was and what that really feels like. It was like a love letter to this apartment in a way. 12 months right here in the same spot doing similar but different things. We have gone around the sun together, marking 12 stops along the way, my friends. Neat, right? I think I know what a year really feels like now, and I haven't felt that way since I was a kid. And by the way, all 12 shows, they're all edited nice and neat and live on my YouTube. They'll always be there, and you can return to it whenever you want. The cool thing is, magic is evergreen. Content doesn't suddenly become irrelevant. So in other words, one can just watch the super duper composite edit of this August show, in August. And then you won't see any mistakes because I'm going to take them out probably. And uh, so on and so forth. Any year. There they are. Just sitting there, living on my YouTube page. Um, so uh, September is the first one. And guess what next month is? Just saying. Speaking of staring intently at a calendar all the time, January, a new year. International magic was the theme. The magical world of Kenyo to be more specific, which was a company from Japan that makes incredible magic tricks that I love. And I'm gonna show you one right now. Does anybody here want to see a real magic trick? And I mean, along the lines of like witches and fairy magic. Anybody interested? Yeah. I need a volunteer. Hello, volunteer. Who do you got? Who are you? Anna. Are you Anna? Okay, Anna Lane. Hi, how are you? So good. Doing good, thanks for always coming. Thank you, and know it too. Thank you for always coming. Check this out. Do you guys see this? Okay. It kind of looks, it looks kind of like a dog bowl, but think of this as a dish that you can put water in. It's, uh, it's utterly pitch black, just a black plastic bowl, okay? That's and a dog bowl. But what we're going to tap into here is um, magic in the spirit of uh, uh, crystal ball visions. Uh, the world of um, uh, um, Stevie Nicks, right? Uh, crying, like uh, looking into a thing and seeing something, right? But what we have to do to start this is get you to pick a card. We're going to do the same thing we did with uh, Sydney. So, uh, here we go. You got uh, cards, 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 cards and things. Yeah. Standard magic, really. Uh, you tell me where to stop, okay? Three, two, one. Yeah. Okay. Oh, not the five of spades. Great card, but how about the one under it? That would be a five of diamonds. Okay. okay. Now, I didn't need to see that. But if I saw it, it's okay too. Because this doesn't have anything to do with you. This has to do with you, Anna, and something else. And I'll show you what I mean. What we do is we pour water into this. And you're going to help me with a mirror. And thank you very much. Let's let's ask that again in a better way. You can help me with this magic trick. Yes. I love you. Thank you very much, Lydia. Okay, ready? Here's what we're gonna do. 
I'm going to pour water. Oh, yeah. If you see yourself looking normal size, then the other size will be magnified. That's going to be useful for everybody in the audience. So well, I'm pouring water in here. Oh, here, actually get on up here so they can see me pouring water into this. And then you gotta you gotta rotate it until Anna can see. Okay. I think that's enough water. I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll pour a little more water. That. Oh, that's wait, still. did you see that? Did you see that? Anna. <laughs> now Anna. That's in the water. And you have been magic. <laughs> That's oh. All right, and then I'm gonna pour the water back out. You need a paper towel again. I'm just showing you. Cool. Showing you that. That's weird. So now you know. Uh, the next thing I'm going to show you guys, I'm quite excited about. Um, uh, Harry Houdini and his wife, Bess Houdini, became famous because of this trick that they did called the Morphosis. The Morphosis was a, uh, this is before he started doing handcuff esca escapology. Houdini and his wife had an act, which is, really centered around this single idea. It was this trunk. And the trunk, uh, what would happen is Bess would um, climb into a mailbag and the mailbag would be tightened around her head and, and locked with a, a clamp and a lock, okay? And then she would be put into this trunk and the lid would come down on her. And then Houdini would be standing on top of the trunk and lift the curtain, okay? And I'll show you. There'd be a curtain, there'd be a trunk. So what would happen is this. We're gonna use these two balls to represent uh, both Houdini's wife, Bess Houdini, who was with him all the way to the end. She's the one who had all those seances trying to get contact with Houdini on Halloween nights, right? This this will represent Bess Houdini, okay? Mm -hmm. This is her going into a mail bag and into the trunk. You see the trunk is empty? Yeah. This is the Morphosis trick. So there she is. And then Houdini's on the outside. He'll be represented in black, okay? Now, I'm gonna set this down like so. And then I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do, can you hold Houdini for me? Yes. And against your black shirt, you'll really be able to see that. Um, by the way, here's uh, here's this trunk. There's no, uh, your white shirt is what I meant to say. There's there's no funny business here. I it's, you know, it's just a curtain, okay? I'm gonna set this curtain down and I'm gonna put the trunk here. So Bess is inside of this, Houdini's on top. Houdini is going to pick up the curtain and it's going to look something like this. He'd lift it up once. Right? And then he'd lift it up twice. And then he'd drop the curtain again and Bess would be on top. And then Houdini would be inside in the mail box, in the mail bag they could do it in three seconds yeah. it took nothing for them to make this transformation it was called morphosis and once again the trick that you just saw involving the crystal was a tenyo trick if you guys remember back in january i did only tricks by a japanese magic company called tenyo this is the trick that I wanted the most from that company. These tricks are highly collectible. This was the one I had my eye on the longest. I'm so glad I have it. I'm glad I was able to perform that for you. It is 
showing you literally what, I mean, a, a representation of what Houdini and Best Houdini did. Again, and it's, it was expensive, but it's called Mini Morphosis. And now you have seen it and um, hope you dug it. Is that cool? I thought that was cool. And that is cool. I would have absolutely done this uh, <laughs> at that 10 year show if I had had the product at that time. Okay. Reason number six. That works. I mean, that's that six, right? Uh, that. All right. What do you got? Magic brought my daughter and I so much closer together than we already were. Uh, Lydia has essentially been my magic consultant. We have geeked out on magic for years now. We talk about methods, theory, event, workshop together. We love it. We'll always have that as a part of our father-daughter story. Speaking of Lydia, February was birthday magic. Uh, if you guys remember, uh, I just, we, she wasn't there, but we kind of like threw a birthday magic show as a genre of magic for, for Lydia. And so um, let's do some of that. Um, here we go, hold on one second. You guys, what birthday is complete without balloons? You know what I'm saying? Also, uh, speaking of, let's do this. Every year I don't have balloons, I don't change my age. You know, don't have balloons then and you'll be an immortal, is all I'm saying. I'm, I'm 30. <laughs> That's your secret. I sleep in Tupperware. That's my secret. <laughs> Whatever works, guys. So listen, um, I was wondering, um, when's the last time you guys held a balloon? It's been a long time, hasn't it? Yeah. Maybe you forgot what it looks like and what they even look like. Am I right? You're right. Maybe you don't even know what they look like. Maybe you've forgotten how to have fun. Maybe you're not trying hard enough to have fun. Maybe you should look at this balloon. Okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. That's fun. So, hold on, hold on one second. <laughs> Okay, how's the volume? 
<laughs> okay. okay. I see that you're on the bed. Yeah. You guys are amazing for doing this. You really are. Um, that was uh, the birthday stuff. Oh, wait, there's one more. Okay, check it out, check it out, check it out, check it out, check it out. Do you guys know who Robert Houdin is? Robert Houdin? His name is, in fact, uh, Jean Mich no, Jean, Jean Pierre, Jean Michel. I don't know, I can't remember. It doesn't matter. I'll, I'll figure it out later. But, so, uh, Robert Houdin is his last name. Okay? I have a handbill. This is a very, very special handbill uh, rep uh, showing a uh, advertising a magic show that Robert who didn't. Now, he is considered the, the father of modern magic, but he he did his work in the mid 1800s. He is the uh, absolute idol of Houdini later when Houdini's in doing magic at the turn of the century, so much so that he takes his name as an eye. Uh, Robert Houdin was famous for a few things. One was that he made magic respectable and made uh, it possible to do parlor magic in the homes of rich people by um, dressing up nicely and doing impressive magic uh, in their homes. And he was a former clock worker. He started off as a clock worker and built automata, like basically robots. Um, inside of this uh, handbill, you can see at the top, uh, that's Robert Houdin, that's him demonstrating one of his robots that he made, basically. And they would do things like sing songs or, or uh, do magic tricks. Some of them, uh, some automata could play a chess game with you. Really incredible stuff. Here's uh, on the bottom, you see a picture of Robert Houdin uh, and his son doing a second sight act. They would uh, had a, basically a mentalism act where Robert Houdin would say, what am I holding up? And his son would say, well, you're holding up a lady's handkerchief, that sort of thing. Um, so he's really an incredible and important figure in magic. Um, I'm gonna do something magical with this uh, magic uh, program. How about that? This thing that costs so much money, I'm just gonna roll it into a ball. Roll it like that. Like a like an ordinary baseball game program. Uh, watch this. I'm gonna take a white ball and push it right through like this. See that? Mm -hmm. Okay, good night, Shan. <laughs> Don't fall asleep. You'll never get to see what happens next. Which is this. Oh. Or this. <laughs> or this. It's impossible. It is possible and it is also essential. Or this. <laughs> Let's make it go back to the way it used to be. And there we are. I'm gonna set that down. Just an ordinary magic program. Doing magical things for you nice people. Okay, that was the birthday month. Now, let's move on. Let's get into the next thing. What was the next thing? Uh, reason number seven, guys. Okay, I feel like we... We're doing great. We're doing great. That's how I feel. Magic uh, successfully helped me to quit smoking. I quit smoking in March of 2020. How I did it is like this. I replaced the pack of smokes with a pack of cards, cold turkey, pulled a deck of cards out, shuffled, shuffled, put the pack of cards back in the pocket. Same shape as the original object, wrapped in cellophane. Think about it. it worked better than anything else I've tried, and it's stuck. Thank you, Magic, old buddy. Speaking of quitting, uh, in March, uh, gambling, smoky dens of vice, and the like, March was thematically about cards, hard magic, dice, gambling, and that sort of thing. Um, and so, I want to show you the following. You guys, I've got four jokers, okay? Two jokers, 
I've got two jokers for myself. And um, I'm just curious, does anybody know in, uh, in gambling or card games, just card games, what do jokers represent? Wilds? Wild cards? Maybe. Wait, let's look it up. I've got Hoyle's rule, rules of games. This little prankster. Just a second, hold on, one second. One second, one second, one second. One second. Yes, wild cards, David. Perfect. Uh, represents uh, wild, wild cards. So um, that is correct. And so um, what you would want to do probably if you were gambling would be to turn it into something very valuable, wouldn't you? If you were gambling and you had wild cards, jokers, what would you turn them into? Ooh, what? Aces? Uh-huh. Old watches. Old watches. I think I heard aces. And if that were true, turn all four of those. Jokers into aces. That's just me. There you go. There's a quick one. Here's another quick one. Uh, regarding gambling, anybody heard of uh, three-card Monty? Has anyone ever heard of that term, three-card Monty? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah, three-card Monty. You can't win three-card Monty. You ever see people playing three-card Monty on the street? Don't give them your money. Um, it's a magician's trick, really, but it's a street hustle. And there's a fine line between a hustle and a magic trick. I will show you this, and it looks like this. I happen to walk past such a magician, such a, a hustler, and this is what it looked like. He had three cards. One, two, three, and he said to me, I've got a game. You, know, you, can, you can beat me, you're gonna make some money. I said, okay, I've never done this before, I'll just do it. And he goes, well, here's the deal. I got three cards. Uh, the first two are red, red diamonds. And the last one, that's a blue one. And the okay. name of the game is, the name of the game is, you just gotta follow where the blue Right, it's like the, the peas under the cups. Yeah, it's like that. It's a good uh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I figured that's what you meant. He shows, yeah, he shows me the blue diamond. And he goes, I'm going to put it under the bottom. Mm -hmm. You tell me where the blue diamond is. If you're right, you get $1. Anytime you're wrong, you owe me a dollar. And I said, okay, that's easy. The blue diamond's on the bottom. He goes, you're wrong. You owe me $1. And I said, well, okay, then... If that's true, then I have a 50-50 chance that the blue is on the top. And he said, you're wrong again. You owe me another dollar. And I said, okay, well then it has to be in the center. You said, you're wrong. That's three dollars. And I said, okay, I think you're cheating and that you don't have a blue card. And he said, you're wrong again. You owe me four dollars. And then he said, okay. Uh, he goes, listen, 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 you're having a hard time with this. Let me make the odds better for you. All you gotta do now is find a red card. I said, that's great. I've got a 66.666% chance of getting the red card right. And he said, sure. I said, so where's the red card at? And he said, well, on the top. He said, you're wrong. I said, well, then there has to be a red card in the middle. And he goes, you're wrong again. So that's two more dollars bringing me up to what? Six dollars? I said, I think you're cheating. I don't even think you have three cards because you're wrong again. You owe me seven dollars. And I said, okay, okay. I gotta get out. I don't. And he goes, no, 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 listen, before you leave, we're gonna go double or nothing. If you can get this next thing right, uh, you'll get 14 dollars. And if you don't, well, you owe me $14. Are you in or are you out? I said, I'm, I guess I'm in. And he goes, okay, I'm gonna show you two cards. All you gotta do is guess what the third card is. He showed me the first card, it was red. And he showed me the second card, it was blue. And then he said, you can tell me what this third card is. You'll get $14. And if you can't, you owe me $14. And I said, 
I think it's both a blue and a red. He goes, you're wrong. You owe me $14. <laughs> oh. And that's why you never play any part Monty with anybody. Uh, you can't win. Um, now we're moving on to reason number eight. Okay. Eight. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I'm going to keep morphing numbers into other numbers. Okay. Ready? You guys are such a great crowd. Thanks for being here. So it's the final show. It's the last one. It's going to be long, I suppose. Um, thanks for being here, though. Uh, okay, eight. No, reason number eight, why am I doing this magic stuff? Oh, because I wanted to know exactly what I know. I mentioned in last month's show that I recently surpassed 100 shows with the Tuesday afternoon thing that I do, Music and Magic Hour. Strong emphasis on having a, as much new magic as possible. I've performed somewhere between 500 to 600 individual new magic breaks. No exaggeration. And certainly perform much more magic than that because I repeat tricks all the time as well. And that, that's been going for years now, since spring of 2019. Um, uh, anyways, I keep everything organized in spreadsheets so I can better understand what I am doing. By the end of tonight, I will have performed, with Lydia's help, of course, exactly 225 magic tricks over the course of this year in this show, just this show. Um, and I think that they have all been the very best tricks that I know how to perform. And when this is all over, I want to take a look at it all and decide what the 50 best were, the 20 best, the top 10. What were the best three? How nerdy. This show has helped me to figure out what works and what does not. So thank you all for helping me with that. Speaking of counting the numbers, April was about money magic, bills, coin magic. Okay? Are we getting the flow down of this? Uh, two tricks per month, um, I'm trying to do them quickly. Uh, the first thing that I wanna show you is this. Um, I had shown you guys something sort of like this, but it involved multiple bills. Um, and um, what I like about this is that it's a single bill. And I was trying to think of a good application for this and I've decided what would be great is this, it would be a great application for a vending machine, um, wherein, um, yeah, I could put in one dollar for a Twix bar. Okay, but what if there were a hundred Twix bars in there? And I don't mean fifty Twix. I mean there's two in a like pants. As we were talking about. What was the other thing? Plural. Twix is a plural, right? That's one. That's just one bar. That's you get two in there. That's one. So a hundred of those. If you want a hundred Twix bars. And you've only got, you, you, just wanna, you don't want to put a hundred one dollar bills in. Well, I got, I got the solution for you guys. So you take a one dollar bill, okay, like so, and you go like this, and then you just turn it into a one hundred dollar bill, like so. Take that into the machine. And then, okay. You're good to go. I mean, you'll get a hundred, you get a hundred Twix bars out of that, and, and then you're good to go for the rest of your entire life, like so. You've seen those vending machines, right? That have a hundred in a row all the way back, one hundred. We're familiar. Right. It's it's very yeah. Anyway, okay. So that's how you do it. That's how you do it. And, you, and then you, you just sit there and wait for them to all fall. Oh, yeah. well, maybe, have you guys seen my promos for this month? Did yeah. they know what movie that was from? Prestige. Prestige. Anybody seen the Prestige? No? I see one. That would be uh, Mikey's seen the Prestige. If you haven't seen it, it's a fantastic movie. Uh, there's a trick in there called The Transport of Man. Uh, it, in fact, seems to be the centerpiece of that film and the jealousy that these two magicians have over this magic trick played by uh, uh, that guy and that guy. Uh, yeah. Why is my... I'm, yeah. Bale. What's that? Christian Bale. 
Yeah, Christian Bale, and then the guy who played Wolverine. Why am I? This is Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. I, this is my favorite movie. Like, yeah, it's because I'm in the middle of a magic zone. Can't think right now. Um, I want to show you guys something kind of cool. Um, an idea I've come up with. I don't know what's it. But it's it's my take on the transported man. It's called the transported coin. And what we do is this. Watch very carefully. Watch very carefully. We go like this. And we know that, of course, the coin is right here. Why would it come? You want to know why? Because I think we're all aware that uh, I'll let you in on a little secret. It's called the French class. I'll do it for you again. Okay, ready? It looks like this. Something like this. All you do is take the coin and then you do one of these guys, like so. And then, amazingly, the coin is still in the hand. So, you know, I fooled you once, fooled you t twice. I suppose I could fool you three times, but I won't. In fact, what I'm gonna do is the actual trick, which is the transported coin trick. And it's gonna look something like this. I'm gonna go like this, watch, watch. And there it is. And there it is. Like so, and like so. Okay? Okay, now. So I am very clever. I'm very Maybe I can transport it back like so. Hmm. Maybe. Wait, it might look something like this. And there it is. Did my hand go down below the camera? I hope not. You may not believe the magic that I just did. Um, there you go. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Now. Marvel feedback. Woo! Wow, thank you. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Going well. You guys are going to love the grand finale. Reason number nine. Reason number nine. Bitty bop, bitty boo. Um, okay. Uh, uh, maybe I shouldn't have written this. I don't know. It was something, reason number nine. It was something new that didn't exist at a time before uh, the divorce. Uh, I felt I really needed something that did not exist before that in order to map out a new pathway, a brand new chapter. An unpleasant point to bring up, but a point significant to bring up. That, of course, brings us to May. Illusions. Optical illusions. Yes, in the merry month of May, we covered illusions or illusion adjacent magic. Um, here's what I've got for you. Something like this. Um, I will need a volunteer in a moment. Um, who, who can I grab? Let's be Eden's hand. Well, actually, hold on, hold on now. Eden, can I grab you for the trick after this one? Are we cool with that? I want to throw it to Brandon. Hi, buddy. Hey. Hey, man. I uh, uh, hope you're doing well. And um, hey, yeah, congratulations. A big, big yeah. moment. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. I, I got something for you, and, um, and it looks something like this. Um, I'm going to use my very uh, favorite cards. So this is Monarchs. They're theory 11. They're really wonderful. Um, and uh, they are. Um, very gorgeous. Okay, so what we're going to do is this. Here's the illusion. I'm going to go like this. 
Oh, turn it. Something like that. And then we're removing half of the pack and Lydia. I'm going to put these cards just transported to my closet into your hand. Now, Brandon, name name any card. Let's go with the three of hearts. Three of hearts? No one ever puts three of hearts. Awesome. Okay, watch very carefully. Okay. Now, wouldn't that be something if that was the three of hearts? How, how many? Oh, yeah. That other half was transported. Right here. So, Brandon, how many cards are in a deck? 52. Hmm. Everybody says that. And, and Brandon, I think that you might be, if you, if I were to give you a second chance to answer that question. Oh, the two jokers. Fifty-four. Yeah. I'm talking about fifty-four cards. So, Brandon, if you really wanted a fair shot at this, we have to give her the jokers. Okay, watch this. Oop, oop. Hideous. <laughs> what a weird shuffle. What an embarrassing shuffle. There you go. Considering what I just said, it's helpful a lot, and it's helped me through some things. Okay, Brandon, this card is the three of hearts. Mm -hmm. I'll send you a vent. I don't know. <laughs> okay. You know? Um, okay, ready? One, two, three. It's on the table the whole time. What? Wow. Amazing. Amazing. Thanks very much. Bye. What are you going to do with your mint? Oh, you know, this is a very um, I have to send it to Brandon because you couldn't figure out which. And then the mint. Um, you might have a chance to win back this mint by the end of the night. <laughs> we get that mint. Oh, that's a good yeah, you get the gum. No. Nobody wanted the gum, so. Yeah, I'm the only person who likes gum. Um, we'll have a long talk after this show about whether or not you get gum. Um, okay. <laughs> the This is for Eden. Eden? Thanks for your patience. Listen, um, I wanted to share with you... Uh, this is really funny because the thing I was about to say, it's got root beer all over it. Um, this is a very precious card to me. Uh, it is a um, queen of hearts. It's the only one of its kind that I have. It's from the 70s. It's uh, it's kind of special to me. And um, kind of a funky, funky late 70s, early 80s vibe. If you need the artwork. So the other thing I want to show you is this. It's called the Phantom Folder. Are you intrigued? Are you interested? Let's go forward, shall we? If you want to know what's inside of this pink folder, watch carefully. I'm going to unfold it panel by panel and show you that inside of the pink paper is a piece of blue paper, which is folded also. And unfold that panel by panel to show you a yellow piece of paper, which is inside. And I'm going to unfold that panel by panel. And now we have this unfolded yellow on blue on pink paper. OK? Now, here's where things get interesting. I'm going to put the queen of hearts inside of the yellow paper, fold it back up like so. And Eden, hope you're watching. It's all fair and square. Folding and 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 doing this and doing this and doing this. Eden, do you happen to have a pair of imaginary scissors? Yes. Okay, I like to see them. 
What do they look like? John. Here, let's play rock, paper, scissors, but you have to pick scissors. <laughs> One, two, three, and I won. Um, but you got scissors. Okay, so listen, why don't you do the phone for me and destroy this card that I just told you was very precious and covered in root beer, um, like so. And here we go, on the count of three, just dig into the camera and cut this card into maybe five pieces. One, two, three, five. Incredible. Thank you. Let's see what damage you've done. Are you ready? I'm unfolding this. I'm unfolding this. We're going into the blue. It looks like this. I'm unfolding it. Eden. <gasps> Look what your magic scissors did to my car. Oh no! Got my card into all kinds of crazy pieces. Yeah. Oh, man, well, listen, I think the only way to get my card back is to just fold it up again. And then you got to think of a good magic word. I recommend Babushka, but here, I'm going to fold it all up again. If David's, got, <laughs> David's got one. Rock and roll. Here, we're going to do that. Do that. We're going to do that. I'm gonna do that, like that, and there. What do you got? Negushka? Negushka, which is cousins of Babushka, yes. And it looks something like this. Babushka, Nagushka. Speaking of Kate Bush, maybe you guys have heard this song before. <laughs> you have to help me. No. Um, and, oh, dang, look at this. Wow. That was a close one. Thank you very much. Thanks for all of your magic volunteerism throughout this year. Clean up. That's a brand new part. Um, wonderful. You guys, let's go on next thing, and that is this. Uh, reason number uh, 10, 10, ah. and it looks like this. That's how you spell 10. Spell? How you spell That's how you spell 10. It's I O. And spotlight. Oh. oh, yeah, you're right. Thank you. <laughs> and maybe turn the music down a little so we can hear you better. I think you just are so sick of this song. <laughs> <laughs> Who can say? How are we doing? Is it okay? I can't, because the fan is on. It makes it hard to... I hope Master of Puppets is next. Oh yeah, definitely in this alternative rock playlist, Master of Puppets. Oh, next. Um, okay. Uh, we didn't watch the last episode of Stranger Things. I you have it? Not well, yet. We're behind. Oh, oh okay. But I, I know it, but I know it's coming. We might be a couple, so like maybe two. One. Well, listen, guys, reason number 10 uh, is this. Honestly, who needs a reason to do a thing they love that's not hurting anybody? It's all in your head and your heart. I don't need this list of reasons. That being said, uh, I read them to you anyway. Uh, but I do have two more reasons, Nick 12. But uh, speaking of things being all in your head, that brings us to June, which was about mentalism and mind magic. Okay, and so let's go there uh, together now. I need a volunteer uh, <laughs> now, and what, uh, mom? Yeah, what? Uh oh, wait a minute. On Tuesday, I think we did this trick. Oh, okay. Ah, Cody. Choose Cody. Remember, remember this trick that involved white cards? Maybe I should I should get somebody maybe I should get somebody else just because uh why don't you try Cody? Cody would be great. And you know him. Well he's, yeah. He's your son. Very, very well. Hey Cody. Get him working. I'm gonna put Cody on the spot. He's probably Oh he's He's probably coming. He's right there. Oh my yeah. god. Cody. Yeah. 
Buddy, put your mute off. There you go. There was music outside. I was trying to. Do you have that bingo game outside again? <laughs> no, it was a it was a DJ tonight. Cody, I've got a uh, this deck of cards. In the middle, I have put a Queen of Spades. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. No funny business here. Uh, it's just one card among all of these white cards. Mm -hmm. White cards, and then somewhere in here, right there. Where are you at? There you are, Queen of Spades. Okay. Cool. Now. This is mentalism. That's the theme right now. This is about precognition. I already know what number you're about to say, but I'm gonna set this up so that everyone else can enjoy this and understand. There are 52 cards in this deck because there's no jokers, right? Uh, but uh, you know, as well as I know, that there are uh, cards on both ends of this. And so the uh, number at which this Queen of Spades is resting can't be at the, uh, in the beginning and it can't be at the end, right? Mm -mm. Can I say that in all weird convoluted way? What I'm getting at is I know what you're about to say. And that, so let's do it. Uh, what number uh, in this deck of 52 cards, you feel the Queen of Spades is sitting at right now. What position is what I meant to say? Uh, 26. 26. Yeah. Yep. Okay, you ready? Sure. 26. All right. So, okay, here we go, man. One, two, three, four. Five, oh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one. 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. That's awesome. Should have said 42. That would, not, that would not be the center. That would not be the center. <laughs> Cody, um, thank you. And hi, Emily. In the back there. All right, thanks for being here, you guys. Matt, that's the type of mentalism is knowing what someone's going to say before they say it, um, or guessing what somebody's going to do before they do it. I got another kind here. And for this, I would love to grab. OK, you guys have written this part that you did. Uh-oh, I hope she's oh, wow. back from each poisoning. I'm gonna uh, show you a bunch of cards, okay? But not not sweet face. Okay. Okay. You cool. I'm showing you cards. And what I'm gonna have you do is I'm gonna track your eyes. We've done something like this before, but what we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna go like this. Uh, let's go. I'm just going to open up a few of these. And... Something like that. Uh, I, what I want to do is have you select one of these cards, okay? Okay. Looking at your eyes. Have you have you selected one? Yes. You got it? Don't tell me. Don't say anything to anybody. You got it? Yes. Okay. Cheyenne? Yes. This is the mentalism show. Did I read my my reason for mentalism or for magic for that one? No. Uh, it's this because maybe it made some people that I care about uncomfortable, and some even disappear, and that is instructive to me. There is a quote that I recently read. Ethan Hawke said it. It goes like this: 
Don't you find it odd that when you're a kid, everyone all over the world encourages you to follow your dreams, but when you're older, somehow they act offended if you even thought. Isn't that a good quote? Yeah, good quote. It really doesn't take much to find out who will stick by your side when you decide to color outside of the box a little bit. So I encourage you to color outside of the box. Anyways, at any age, it feels pretty good. Now, I just interrupted our trick by reading that. Because I'm not thinking straight. But uh, you still have your card in mind, right? Yeah. Well. And Snoopy says her card on her mind. Oh, okay. So it's just, at least she's got a suit on her head. She seems confused about this. Yeah. Cheyenne, what, Cheyenne, was your card a high card? Can you define the high card? No, I won't. I will not define it. So, Anne, I'm going to just reach in mm. like this. And I want you to tell everybody what your card is. Seven of three. Yes. Okay. Mentalism. Um, thank you, Cheyenne. You're welcome. Now, uh, that brings us to, um, that brings us to the final, um, the final month for this month, and that's July. That was the one about togetherness and magic through the computer, magic in your hand, okay? I was originally just going to have Lydia be uh, uh, coming out for this tri these tricks, but I decided to have her here the entire time. I'm glad I did. You're a great companion. You've been a much help throughout the show. Um, let's do it. So um, here's what we're going to do. Uh, Mom, mm -hmm. I, I hope you guys are surviving. It's 11. Oh, I stay up till late. Don't worry. This is an insane thing to do. This thing we're no, doing. I, I, I don't care. Fine. Yeah, I can't believe we're going to do that. I can't believe we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Okay, so, but first, let's do this. Um, Mom? Yeah. I have a deck of cards. Okay, so here, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go like this. I'm gonna pull out uh, some cards, okay? Mm -hmm. And then I need your help for this. So, um, I don't know what I want you to do here, but um, I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna have you, okay, this is a weird idea. This is a weird idea. I've got a credit, I've got a credit card. that I don't use because it's not a real credit card. So listen, I want you to tell Lydia where to put this fake credit card. Yeah, you can just like wave it around. You tell her where to stop, okay? Oh, by the way, by the way, mom, Yeah. these are all, it's just a, a deck of cards. Yeah, okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Great. What do you mean, uh, If I had a credit card, I would, I would be spending money probably. So wait, my mom is in Oh, yeah. So you tell her where to stop. Stop. There? Oh, yeah. I put that yes. in? Yes. Okay, great. So, yeah, push that in. Now, this is a weird way to do this. But what's fun about this, mom, is that I can spread this out and show that you selected the um, card that is, I mean, it's just cut right into it. So, it's hard to see this. Let's see if I can do Paul. You have okay. cut to a uh, eight of clubs. Yes. Okay, fair enough? Yeah. Everybody cool with that? Eight of clubs, okay. okay. So, I'm gonna take the credit card out. There it is. Now, 
uh, I am going to magically make that card vanish. <laughs> you please look through these cards and find the eight clubs? You have to trust that Lydia is looking and not going to find it because it's not there. It's gone. It's gone. There is a native spades, but that's not the same thing as native clubs. No. Where did it go? In your wallet. In the box? I thought maybe winning your wallet. You know, I pull these cards out of this box. Yeah. Lydia, can you please open this box and take out the contents of this box? Oh. <laughs> A little bo littler box. A littler can box I, I just came out of this box. Yes. Yeah, these way. cards just came out of. Yeah, yeah so you can we, open up that little box. What's no way inside? Be, yeah. What's inside of that box? A cute little box. No, it's a golden. Even smaller. It's oh. a card. Card, mom. Eight o'clock. Whoa. It's incredible. That is. That's that magic. is marvelous. Yeah. That, is, oh, magic. that is magic. This is good. That's good. Um, okay, I'm gonna put these back in. Well, I'm gonna put all this. And now we have come to the uh, final trick. So, uh, I'm just gonna read this last reason, okay? Yeah, you know, I just wanna get out of the way. Because I got to connect with my friends and family in a special and new way. And to my friends and family who got it and kept coming back for more, thank you for being here for me. I also want to thank my wonderful girlfriend, Cheyenne, for mm -hmm. understanding how badly I wanted to do this and for never making me feel bad about it or discouraging me for one second. In fact, for encouraging and supporting me and helping me to do it. Thank mm -hmm. you, Cheyenne, for patiently enduring the whole thing including this makeshift, makeshift theater in our dining room, especially when it was set up for days and days on end. And also thank you for not killing me after having had literally hundreds and hundreds of magic tricks tested out on you. <laughs> I know you liked quite a lot of them. Uh, sorry, not sorry. Thank you and I love you. And mm -hmm. I, hope, I hope that I'm your favorite magician that you were in love with. <laughs> Not to think about consider all of the magicians I'm in love with. I'm the, well, uh, of all the magicians you are currently in a relationship with, I hope I'm the tippy top. Yeah, you're one. the favorite. You're the favorite of them all. The top real contender here, guys. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay, so wonderful. Now, um, this last thing, I just want to tell you guys. Uh, in terms of uh, magic that you'd have to do with somebody else. There's no magic you'd have to do with somebody else. Quite like the bullet catch. I brought it up before. Um, do you want to unpin? What's that? Unpin. Yeah, let's do that. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Now the bullet catch, yes, totally. The bullet catch has taken the lives of 12 magicians. A dozen magicians confirmed for sure yeah. since since even before the 1800s, I think. It goes back to the 1700s, I think. I might be wrong, but definitely 12 magicians have been killed by the bullet catch. Um, I'm super fascinated by it, um, but uh, it's the most dangerous thing in magic. Um, so dangerous that Harry Houdini was advised by his friend Harry Keller to never do it. And he obliged Harry Keller's advice uh, he wrote him a letter and just said, don't, you know that one? Don't do it, ever. Don't even think about it. Well, I'm gonna attempt it right now. Uh-oh. No, do not. With party poppers. Um, these guys, <laughs> okay? <laughs> it's gonna be beautiful. And Lydia is gonna be the person firing the bullet. 
Oh, come on. I am going to catch. I'm going to catch something very specific. So, what's going to happen is, you guys, I want... Once it's... She's going to shoot it. I'm going to catch whatever I'm going to catch in my mouth. And then I want one person to yell out a color. Okay? Mm -hmm. You understand how what many, I mean? How many magicians have died from this party popper shit? No one yet. Okay, good. You ready? You're the first one to do it. This is it. Yeah, Boy, am I glad that this song is the song playing. Okay. Okay. Come roll. Come roll, please. Red, red, red. We saw red go. I mean, I am still streamers um, all over his face until he brushed them off. Well, what definitely happened was uh, he's up for debate and uh, the stuff of legend, and uh, it'll take years to uh, dissect what really happened here today. But cheers to me for successfully surviving and catching the uh, requested ribbon in my mouth. Good job being a gun thief, the marksman, marks lady, markswoman, marks person. <laughs> now you guys, traditionally in these shows, uh, we do all this stuff and then we do something else. And that's now. So this is the last time there is that now that follows all of the other stuff. And then uh, uh, we go back to our lives and That'll be fine. Um, oh, let's not even worry about any, anything that you see. I got all tomorrow to clean it up. I don't know. <laughs> um, so, the last show uh, that we did, there was a final trick. And um, it was kind of a... Um, Kind of a kind of a cool trick, but I I didn't feel like we uh, really hit the thing in the right in the bullseye that I wanted. And um, uh, basically, of all the tricks that I have ended a show with, I am interested in revisiting this. Um, and 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 here's here's the thing: uh, if you were at the last show, we did a trick called Portal. And Portal was, um, it was interesting, but I think it's plausible to anybody watching it that I might have two of any given object, and that that would be uh, a, a way to explain how I was able to move something from here to there and back again. But um, I, I've come upon a method, a way, a proof to all of you uh, that I can do this trick, and you will know that it is not the same object. You guys want to know what that object is? No. Okay. Right. Uh, it is this. 
Frankenberry cereal. Uh, it's August, you guys. This was in my cupboard. And nobody has a box of Frankenberry cereal, let alone two, sorry, nobody has two Frankenberry cereals, let alone one Frankenberry cereal in their cupboard in August. It only comes out once a year and that's around Halloween, as far as I understand. So with this, I am going to uh, proceed to blow your mind with your help. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm trying to find the right song for this and I feel like, uh, well, let's go back with New Order. Okay, now, it looks something. Um, why don't we, in fact, uh, let's do the following. Um, let's grab our magic wands. We're gonna need them. Um, you guys ready? Here we go. That'll be useful. <laughs> One, two, three. Okay, we're opening a portal here and over, here. and over there. That's pretty easy, right? I think you might need to put that right behind that. Oh, wow. Okay, oh. that's fine. You guys ready? Sorry. Maybe you need to get over a little bit. This one? That one? And just scoot it, scoot a bit. I Right there. And let us begin. Can't wait to find out what happened. It's gonna look something like this. So basically I'm just gonna hand this to you. And then as I, I move my hand over and then watch what happens. It's it's really weird. And look, watch. I'm just gonna move I'm just gonna do this and then it, I'm gonna move over and then just grab this. and then there it is. It's right there. It's really easy. And, and you can go the other way too. Here, in fact, bring it back this way. And then uh, it's gonna look something like this. <laughs> back the other way too. Uh, back the other way too. Yes. Wow. That's something. And then, and then, you know, just keep going. Just go and go and go. I'm telling you guys, it's one box of Frankenberry. Nobody has two boxes of Frankenberries, <laughs> that would be nuts. That would be really overdoing it for whatever your deal in life is, right? I mean, that would be overdoing it. What do you think? Yeah. Oh, here, you bring it right back, bring it right back. Actually, I'm gonna clone this, clone okay. I'm cloning oh. it, and now there are two. Now there are two. Not before that. Now that is really interesting. That's I mean, crazy. That's crazy. That's a pretty good final, that's a pretty good final trick, I think. I mean, I guess we did it last time. But, uh, um, but, you know. <laughs> but, uh, we could go further. We could take this further. What do you say? Yeah. Let's take it further. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. No, no. Keep them together. Okay, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, oh, God. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going. Whatever you need. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, let's do this. And then um, let's do... Uh, Let's do this, shall we? One, two, three. If you close the door, the night could last forever. Leave the sun shine out and say hello to never. All the people are dancing and they're having such fun. I wish it could happen to me. But if you close the door, I'd never have to see the day again. If you close the door, the night could last forever. Leave the wine glass out 
and drink a toast to never. Oh, someday I know someone will look into my eyes and say hello. You're my very special one. But if you close the door, I'd never have to see the day again. Dog party bars, shiny Cadillac cars, and the people on subways and trains. Looking grey in the rain as they stand a serene. Oh, but people look well in the dark. And if you close the door, the night could last forever. Leave the sun shine out. And say hello to never. All the people are dancing and they're having such fun. I wish it could happen to me. 'Cause if you close the door, I'd never have to see the day again. I'd never have to see the day again. Once more, I'd never have to see the day again. You have to do yourself a favor when you're out in the countryside and you see chicken. Try to look a chicken in the eye. I have actually learned from uh, American popular television, like unsolved mysteries. The voice was particularly wonderful. Gloom and fear spreading voice and it says for example when the dentist came back home after work he found the door to his home ajar it was open and there was pitching uh, they're very prone to hypnosis and in one or two films I've actually shown that but why who's the leader of the club that's made few and me M-I-N-K-E-Y-M-O-N-S-E Hey there, hi there, ho there, you're as welcome as can be M-I-N-K-E-Y-M-O-N-S-E Minky Mons Minky Mons Forever we will hold your planner Hi 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 Come along and sing the song and join our jamboree M-I-N-K-E-Y-M-O-N-S-E Now it's time to say goodbye to all our company. M I N. See you real soon. K E Y. Why? Because we like you. We like you. M O N S E. Thank you for traveling all the way around the sun with us on this world, which is not ending, not anytime soon anyway, for it is not the end of the world. If it is, however, the end of the world, and I am wrong about it being not the end of the world, or sometimes I am wrong, please, please, please remember to do your best to fight the end of the world. And remember, you have a great world, the best, the most magical world. 
from our end of the world, your end of the world. Thank you. We love you. We did it. And that's it. Good night. <laughs> All right. Love you guys. Have a great night. Thanks, Robin. You're so welcome. This is where we turn our video off and then back on again, like this. Like this. <laughs> like this. Encore. <laughs> and this is where we uh, squeeze a lot out of a knife. And, and there's the bread trick. And we love <laughs> And we turn the video off again. And then we turn it back on. <laughs> Love you. All right. One more trip. One, One more. Trip. Love you. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. One, two, three. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. You're <laughs> <laughs> all duds. Ow. Oh, that was a good one. Oh, all right, all right. Love you guys. No, oh, okay, that's enough. That's lit on fire for. A that's gonna freak our neighbors out. Nope. Love you guys. Mwah. Be good. Be magical. Stay young. Stay happy. Bye, you guys. Yeah. Oh,